In today's video, we're going to do a deity difficulty walkthrough of how to play the early game in Civ 5. We'll cover early build order in your capital, scouting, what social policies to take, how to choose a good location for your expansion cities, how many expansion cities to build, and expansion city build order. Without further ado, let's get into it. First and foremost, we have to choose where to settle our capital. Now, we've been rolled this start as the Maya, and this is going to be interesting. We're playing as the Maya, we have our long count special ability, we're on small continents map, standard map size, data difficulty and quick game pace. Now, initially when we get a starting location for our capital, I always like to settle in place. I think the game does a really, really good job of actually just choosing where to put you. So I like to settle in place immediately, almost, almost regardless of whatever I roll. Sometimes you might consider moving, but usually when you move, you're giving up something. When we look at our city right now, probably the most crucial things to have when you settle your capital immediately are how many tiles do you have which either have three food or two food one production on them those are like the main tiles you need or food all tiles with two food and no production that's what you need the most when we sit here and look at our start we see that within our first ring we've already got a two food one production tile that's perfect and on our second ring we're going to have this cocoa tile and this other wheat that also have two food one production now we don't see any other food tiles here but if we put some improvements on both of these sheep there'll be two food two production so i reckon we got one two three four five perfectly usable tiles straight out the gate we're on a hill next to a river there's no reason not to sell in place here so we'll go and do it found our capital city of palenque and immediately lock in our two food one production tile there's a priority order of which tiles you want to be working in the early game for growth and in general actually just which tiles you want your cities to be working first for your first probably i'll probably go out and say it like eight like six to ten tiles but like eight kind of in the middle you want to be working in priority order tiles with three or more food on them then tiles with like two food one production then tiles with two one food two production tiles with that sort of thing you want to be leaving tiles with with less than two food on them till the absolute last that first eight tiles or so that you're working you want them all to have two food on them or more ideally three plus because tiles with three or more food on them are the ones that are going to allow your city to grow. Our best tile here of that order is this two food, one production wheat tile. And we are immediately going to build ourselves, I think, one scout. And then we'll see what happens. Now, traditional early build order pretty much dictates two scouts and a worker. And you know what? Actually, that's probably going to be perfectly good for us here. So we'll go scout, scout, worker. That is our slam dunk early build order. The only time you probably want to change scout, scout, worker is if you think you've got a really good chance at getting a religion, in which case you might want a shrine, or you think that you're going to benefit from getting a granary early, such as in this circumstance where we've got two wheat. Now, that could be a possibility for us. We might want to think about doing that. Either way, our standard tech is going to be pottery, then animal husbandry, then mining, and then we may need sailing because we are coastal on a small continent map then let's go explore with the early warrior here we've even got salt nearby that's pretty good okay let's go and immediately duck into the room we found mount kailash that's interesting and we've got pottery straight away so we've got some ruins so that is already pretty good let's next turn for a minute let's go have a look around mount kailash because we may want to settle it and in fact we probably can like if we go we've just jumped onto a hill here if we go here and then jump in there, crudely drawn map and another ruin. Like there's a city in here for sure because it gets Mount Kailash. Sadly, Mount Kailash has no food on it. And you'll notice that disobeys the rule that I was talking about earlier that suggests that all of our first eight tiles in a city pretty much need to be trying to work tiles with at least two food on them. Kailash does disobey that, disobey that rule. And that's actually, it's not great. Wonders like Aluru are better because they have two food on them. But Kailash gets you more faith, so... It's not the end of the world, and there's happiness on it as well. So let's next turn here. I mean, we will be wanting to settle Mount Kailash, but we don't want to go, like, absolutely wild trying to do it. And then let's move around. We need to see what's going on on our coast here, because production focus for the production focus trick. We need to see what's going on around our coast here, because our capital is coastal, and that tends to mean that you should aim to get probably two of your expansion cities coastal as well. That's just what having a coastal capital tends to not dictate because you're never forced into doing anything but the power of those food cargo ships is so good and the ability to have lots of cities working together on the coast producing boats is so good that you tend to want to have 
two expansion cities by the coast if your capital is already also on the coast. So we're going to have a look out to see if there's anything we can do with that. Palenque is already on the coast and it's quite good. It's a long way around up there. I'm thinking a city up here could be plausible, but it's going to be really difficult to fit a good one in. If we're thinking about trying to have our first eight tiles that our city work, being tiles with two or more food on them even, we've got fish, 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 sheep, deer. So that's five. <laughs> and that's all this city is going to have, which is a bit challenging. If we can find some more food in that region, that would be perfect. Ah, oh, Egypt. We finally met. Where did we meet you? Up here. Interesting. Let's go grab this ruin. Pub ruin. Very nice. Okay. And we've even found horses. They're right here on the river. That is very good indeed. Now you'll notice we're not working. We're only working one, two food tile right now in Palenk. That is unfortunate. It's essentially because we haven't border expanded to any of our other tiles with two food on them yet. There's literally nothing here. In order of tiles, we want three food tile, then two food, one production, then two food, no production, and then one food, two production. We don't even have we don't even have any two food, no production tiles here. So we've had to work these sheep rather begrudgingly. It is what it is. The best thing that I can say here. But at least we got some horses, so that's a thing. And our capital is just not going to be growing for a bit while we build this worker and then probably go and get... Because we're the Maya, we could probably benefit a lot from building a pyramid. And this is one of those occasions where you may break that scout, scout, worker, and then probably just settlers or scout, scout, worker, granary kind of vibe. When you have something like a special building, much like what we've got here with the pyramid, which is plus two science, plus two faith, so much better than a shrine. Let's keep moving around. I guess we've got nowhere else to move around to. So forgot to visit the city state down here. That's unfortunate. We can't really see an awful lot that's worth settling south of Palenque, apart from, I guess, for this fish right here. If we go fish, sheep, salt, this cattle, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total tiles, which we think eight maybe, including the salt, that we think can have at least two food on them. So I think we can squeeze a city in here around Mount Kailash. There's whales here. Next thing we need to look at is unique luxuries. Now, we have gold, we have cocoa, and we have salt. Unfortunately, we actually don't see a fourth luxury that we could settle. If we wanted that, maybe we need to go and settle these whales over here. But settling these whales is going to be so difficult. Like, how do we settle those whales here and get a good city out of it? Not sure. And Egypt's actually right here, so that definitely means we shouldn't be doing that. We could probably settle for the silk down here. And that's probably what's going to get us our fourth city. Now, in the early game, you want to generally be looking for, essentially, the number of cities you can have equals the number of luxuries you can have minus one. Or the number of luxuries that you can get into your lands minus one. So because we see salt, gold, cocoa, and probably silk here, we're thinking about basically saying we see four unique luxuries that we can get in our lands. That means we can have four minus one cities. So three cities here. That's not great. Has to be said. And, but because we've got Mount Kailash here, that gives us plus two happiness. So we're getting really close to being able to have... It's, but the game's basically saying we can have three and a half cities, not three. So we're going to try and stretch that to four. Just because like four cities can just about be made to work if you're getting faith and happiness from something separate like the Mount Kailash Natural Wonder. So that's what we're going to do here. We should probably start trying to kill barb camps with our spearmen. Because we've done all of the scouting we really can here. And let's go now that we've border grown to this tile immediately. We're going to work it. That's our wheat. We're going to build this pyramid. Do we think that we want to start building settlers right away actually? Or do we want to get this pyramid built first and then build settlers? And do we want to try and grow while we're doing that? I think we're probably going to go for immediate settlers straight after this. Or maybe before the pyramid. Because the pyramid is... Eh, we'll go for settlers after the pyramid. And because we're going to go for settlers straight after the pyramid, we are just going to work maximum production here in our cities right away. And because we're doing that, we're going to get our workers to come out and actually start chopping down forests in order to speed up our settler production. Let's come down. We need to actually wait here with this scout for a second. And then we need to meet the city state. OK, 
Okay, and let's start chopping down these forests to speed up our production. And we'll do that for when we're building Settlers too. Thebes is right here. I'm not entirely sure we can get this city, but we will try for it. Probably settle it a little bit defensively, a bit away from Thebes on the other side of this river. No thanks. Let's keep chopping down forest. That's production towards this pyramid. Very nice. Then let's come this way. We're going to need to deal with this barb camp because it's going to be way too annoying. We'll protect this tile here because we want to chop it down next with our worker. Keep chopping down forests in order to speed up production. And we're okay with chopping down this forest here because we want to improve this luxury resource as soon as we can anyway. Let's come bring the spearman over so we can start dealing with that barb cam that's down here. And then chop this forest down. We are going to go sailing with our tech path because we are coastal. And because we are on the small islands map, we're going to need to be able to get some triremes out to have some visibility up and down the coast. There we go. And first and foremost, now we have to talk about early game social policies. Early game social policies is sadly quite a straightforward thing, but I'll guide you through the basics here. First and foremost, uh, let's rule out some social policies to start. Or rather, let's... Yeah, we can talk about some of the benefits. Let's rule some out. So when you're looking at your early game social policy, we call this your opening social policy. That is essentially the social policy that you're going to open and stick at first. And that will dictate how how good your empire is to start with basically and what do you want to lean into with your empire in this early phase of the game now tradition is generally accepted to be the best but if we take a look at honor and piety for a moment essentially what tends to happen if you run down the honor tree is that the own honor tree is only good if you're planning to go to war with other civilizations and that game is going to end before about turn 100 that's because honor does absolutely nothing to help the growth of your empire at all and by taking honor, essentially, you're getting what you would have gotten from all the other social policy trees, but frankly worse, except in the area of military. Now, the problem is, if you can take honor and you can end the game with about within about 100 turns on like quick speed or like 150 turns on standard speed, something like that, then that's a win because your empire being rubbish after 100 or 150 turns because you've got no growth bonuses, that's fine because the game's over, you've won. Problem is, is that when we're on deity difficulty, that game is never going to end that soon. And that's just because the AIs on the other side of the map, the ones that you're going to be killing last, those are going to have the opportunity to go so strong that even your honor upgraded armies by that time in the game will not be able to take on the tech upgraded armies that the deity AI is fielding. So honor, not good unless we're anticipating ending the game before about turn 100, turn 150. Not going to happen on deity difficulty, particularly not going to happen on quick speed. You might get it done on the equivalent of marathon, but definitely not on deity. Probably not on deity standard or deity quick game pace. Now we roll over to piety. Piety leans into religion effectively in your empire. It is great if you want to have a great religion. The problem with piety actually is that you take piety, you get all of these religious bonuses. And what tends to happen is that tradition has growth bonuses and it has um, happiness bonuses in it. And what tends to happen is that you take all of your policies and things in piety and all that does is replace the happiness bonuses that you're already getting in both tradition and liberty as it so happens. So effectively everything that you take in piety replaces the bonuses that you were getting in tradition and liberty for happiness except you now don't get the growth or production bonuses that either tradition or liberty are providing and you start using that piety faith to chase those happiness bonuses that you desperately need for so long that essentially it makes it really really tough to make piety as good as, if not better than, tradition or liberty. The only thing it's got going for it is Jesuit education, which is the thing that lets you buy your science buildings with faith. That's a positive. But again, that just replaces the production bonuses that you missed out on from the other two social policy trees. So we rule out honor. We rule out piety. Now we roll over to tradition and liberty, the two commonly accepted winners. Essentially, tradition is great for any empire with five or even six cities or fewer. And it's great because... You get loads of free stuff for your first four cities. Then there's a big growth bonus um, that you get here in land and elite. Growth in the capital, food in the capital. There's overall growth in the tradition tree. There is monarchy, which provides you minus unhappiness for every two citizens in the capital. Essentially, there's free happiness in here from monarchy. If your capital is pop 20, you've got 10 free happiness from that. So that is actually really cool. And it also helps border growth. So tradition, it's got growth bonuses. 
It's got happiness bonuses. Those are two huge things that you need to start the game. So tradition's great. Um, liberty then is better essentially where tradition isn't. Tradition is simply the best for empires with five or even six cities or fewer because of all these, because the free aqueducts and the free um, legalism will give you a free culture building, which becomes a free monument. The, those bonuses are so good that essentially you need to have seven cities or more before the bonuses that you get in your cities after four from Liberty beat out the bonuses that you get to your course four cities from tradition. And so why is Liberty good for a bigger empire than that? Or why does it start to win out once you start rolling up to seven cities? Plus one production every city, plus 5% production in cities when constructing buildings. That adds up fast. Liberty has a longer build queue because it doesn't get any free buildings. And that plus one production is massive for helping it get through that build queue and then actually being stronger in terms of production compared to a tradition city. Similarly, you're going to get yourself a free worker somewhere. I forget where this free worker pops out now at citizenship. So improvement is increased and you get a free worker in the capital and all of your settlers are trained at half the speed. And essentially what that means is if you take liberty and you build eight cities, or even if you take liberty and you build seven cities, those settlers come out in the same amount of time as it would take for you to build three expansion cities in tradition. So pretty cool. And then some other happiness bonuses in there too. Essentially what you're looking at is traditional liberty is your choice. Am I going to build six cities or fewer? Or am I going to build seven cities or more? In our case, we've just spoken about the fact that we're going to argue for four cities. So we're going to pick tradition. And we'll take that now and we can move on with the rest of the game this scout we kind of will use this scout to move down and maybe support this warrior in taking out the barbarian encampment here and we'll pause this scout there for now we need to steal a worker from this city state down here so we do need to get down there asap with our units <laughs> an archer's here we'll maybe try and work on that archer we'll actually bring this other scout over too and then We'll improve the horses because we will actually get some settler production from that horse improvement. See, we, may, we might as well have just improved this wheat here if we thought that we were going to be done building our settlers by the time we got the horses improved. But we got quite a lot of settler production time ahead of us. So we're going to get good value for improving these horses here. Now, what's happened here is we've started taking some damage with our spearmen because we was attacking this barb camp and then we've been shot at and attacked this archer. Don't be afraid to take instant heals on your early game units like this Spearman. If you're talking about using the units that you are going to kill enemies with, like literally kill empires with to win the game, then you want to fuss about taking some other improvements. But if you're not talking about units that you're going to use to kill empires with, instant heals are absolutely free. Just go ahead and do it. It will help you move faster in the early game and in the early game speed over like accuracy or like what's like the best in the long term tends to win because actually having speed in the short term is going to give you bonuses in the long term. Now we'll, we'll go for calendar next. Essentially, our standard rule is going to be pottery, animal husbandry, mining. And um, then usually we'll go bronze working and then luxury technologies. Instead here, we've gone sailing and then we'll take calendar just because we know that we're going to need to get this cocoa improved so that we can actually settle our city. It's the only reason we're taking calendar here and then we will resume going back to bronze working. Let's go and steal this city-state worker. And what's going to be quite good is by the time we've stolen a city-state worker and come back, our settler for Mount Kailash here will be down on this tile so that settler can start improving tiles for us immediately. We want to start hurting this barb camp now. And we're just going to position this scout outside. Essentially, it's here for moral support and to eventually get the killing blow on this barb camp. And also to block these barbarians off from interfering with our settler moving all the way down here to our settle tile we have our settler so let's go and let's keep moving down to go meet the city state here kuala lumpur hello kuala lumpur is a cultural city state and it's friendly and one of the things that i really like to do the most is that my first spy i always like to put in any city state in order to try and become friends and eventually allies with it it's an easy way to get yourself one guaranteed city state ally for the whole game and ideally, that is a city-state that is friendly or irrational. Basically, any city-state that's not hostile. And any city-state that's either mercantile or cultural. That's because culture is just the most valuable thing to get out of a city-state. Because the amount of culture you get from city-states is huge compared to the amount of culture that you can generate yourself in the early game. And culture is important. Or mercantile for the happiness. This is a friendly, cultural city-state. This is absolutely ideal. And it has a unique luxury that we don't have. 
We want to be friends with Kuala Lumpur, absolutely. Can we kill this Barb Camp this turn? The answer is sadly no, so we're just going to heal here. We can't kill it, so we are just going to have to heal and sit here for a moment. We don't want to get our Spearman too close to death. Barbarian Archer is coming in from the north, which might be problematic. And this is why, if we'd attacked this Barb Camp right now, we would have been in serious risk of being shot by this Archer and then hit by this Brute and having ourselves killed here. We didn't want that to happen, so we healed here. And instead, that's going to give us an opportunity to try and take on this Archer. And we're going to nearly be able to kill this Archer. And with 45 hit points left and two really wounded units, we shouldn't have any difficulty surviving into the next turn with our Spear. We can take our next policy in Tradition. In Tradition, you want to immediately go down to Legalism, then to Landed Elite, then to Monarchy, and then for Aristocracy last. Take Monarchy over Landed Elite if you're in some happiness issues, but otherwise that's the order you want to go. You want to get the free cultural building as quickly as you can. Now for our Pantheon, because we're actually going to try for a religion here, usually I don't recommend even going for a Pantheon at all, but because we're actually trying to go for a religion here, we should probably take something that's going to give us faith so that we can keep propagating this religion. Now, looking at this land, I really only see maybe three faith options. We've got faith from gold, which we could have. We've got faith from iron and salt, which we could have. And we've got faith from natural wonders, which we could have. Now, the problem with faith from salt is that it only gives us one. The problem with faith from gold is that it'll only give us two. And what's worse about the gold one is that, well, if you look at these gold tiles, where do they fit in our order of tile priority? Don't have two food. Don't have two food, one production. Like Those gold tiles do not have two food or more on them, and we can never have them, which means we don't want to be working them until our city's like 10 pop or more. Because we don't want to be working these tiles, we don't want to have to work these tiles for religion. But what's quite fortunate is we've got Mount Kailash here, and there is one policy here called One With Nature that's plus four faith from Natural Wonders. In general, if you're trying to go for a religion, you want a pantheon that gives you four faith or more. And this one gives us four faith. So we're going to take one with nature right here and go and settle Mount Kailash. Great library's been built. That's where we want to be. Actually going to kill this archer here with the scout because I we really desperately need to heal this spearman. And we don't have an instant heal this time. That's our horses complete. Very nice. And we can actually sell some horses to Egypt. So why don't we just sell him one? And then carry on. This is a bit precarious here. If a barbarian spawns here, it could... Actually, it can't take our settler because this is a hill. Even though it doesn't look like it. Let's have a look around for Kuala Lumpur's worker. Here it is. Let's immediately declare war on Kuala Lumpur. We've got Kuala Lumpur's worker and we will immediately make peace. Now, the reason we do this is because you get one free declaration... Um, there we go. You get one free declaration of war on city-states in general before you start being punished by it. So we've used up our one free declaration of war now, and there was just an exposed worker that we could take. Because you can make peace with city-states whenever you want. We declare war on it, then we made peace with it on the same turn. No damage done there. However, now we can't declare war on Kuala Lumpur or any other city-state, um, lest we suffer diplomatic penalties with other city-states. And those diplomatic penalties are really harsh. You don't want to take them at all. So that's our one. On our scout. Now I've talked about the, the benefits of taking instant heals here. But on scouts. Getting scouting one and survivalism one. Is really really big for. Essentially your ability to do scouting with your scouts. So we're going to take scouting one here for extra vision. And we're going to keep healing in front of this barbarian brute. Um. We now have our settler in place, so we're immediately going to found our new city of Takal. Production focus for the production focus trick, and we're actually immediately going to buy this salt here, so it's in our territory, so we can work it. It's a two food, one production tile, so it's got two food or more. We want to be working in the early game with our first, like, with first eight population points or so. And then we're going to take a granary. Now, in our expansion cities, initial expansion city build order, almost always goes granary then library there's only really one exception and that is if well one if you go in liberty because you want to go monument granary library or two with your first settle especially if it's got good production you might be able to squeeze in a worker in there somewhere otherwise you want to be going granary library and um, we're going to be going granary to start because the granary is what's needed to 
do two things. It kickstarts the growth in your expansion city by giving it this extra two food that it does. But it also allows you to send internal food trade routes between your cities. And by getting granaries in our expansions, we can send an internal food trade route from Takao to Palenque. That is absolutely where the money is on really any game of Civilization V. Growth is king and internal food trade routes are probably one of the most OP things you can get to increase your growth. So we want those. We're going granary first for that exact reason. Wondering if we can risk taking out this barb camp soon. We can certainly get it close, but I think one more turn and then we can go for it. We don't really want to risk losing our units to a Barbarian spawning next turn. Improve Luxuries next because we're already at zero happiness. And now we can start to go for it. So we'll hit it there. Then with the Scout, we won't do it. So we'll use the Scout to finish it off next turn if our Warrior doesn't manage it. And we'll keep moving around. We're going to need to get our Settler in place over here. <laughs> along the coast. And here is that barb that spawned, so that could have been quite difficult. Got another instant heal on our spearman. We're going to take it again so that we can keep moving with speed. And then this scout can even attack this archer here. Should be safe enough. Borders have grown to this gold. That's perfect. Now, unfortunately, we don't have anything to escort a settler up to this top area of the map yet. But we also have this slightly contested spot with Egypt down here. So we're going to immediately go for the contested spot next. And we'll probably bring this scout out to support and swing this worker around this way. Uh, we do need to, unfortunately, work Mount Kailash into Cal. So we are going to, when we get 24 more gold, buy that tile. And we'll probably get that 24 gold by working tiles like this. That have gold on them from our luxuries and gold on them from the salt. And then let's keep moving this way here. And we'll support the settler moving this way with this scout. Okay. This scout needs to come into our territory to heal. And this also needs to come into our territory to heal. And we've met Korea. Let's immediately go trade our Coco for Korea's Ivory. Because we're going to get duplicates online for Coco. We don't have them yet. But you want to prioritize establishing these luxury trades as soon as you possibly can on Deity Difficulty. We don't need it. We can't get happiness from it, but we want to establish them now so that we get them going. So we're going to immediately do that. And then we're going to try and like cheese a couple of horses from them by selling them one horse for two gold per turn. That works with the Deity AI in the early game, so we're going to do that. Doesn't work on lower difficulties, but Deity AI builds so many units, gets so many bonuses, it can make use of the extra horses. That's why you can sell horses to the, the Deity AI on Deity, but not on lower difficulties. We need to keep improving our luxuries, so we'll move over to improve our gold next in Palenque. Tikal has already grown. We, The best thing for us to do here in Tikal is, again, we roll down our priority order. No 2 plus food tiles at all, apart from a 2 food, 0 production tile. Sadly, we just have to work that. There is no other option. In fact, there is another option, because this tile here is just as good in our capital for settler building. So, in fact, this one is slightly better. Because you cannot starve while building settlers. So you just want to work max production in your city when you're doing that. Because then this improved Coco tile here can actually be worked by Takao for the minute. Now that we've got bronze working, we need to look to see if we need any more luxury techs. We don't, but because we're coastal, optics is a massive priority. So let's go for optics now. And this scout can wait here. Then we'll keep moving. We should probably go on the coast here. And I was thinking coast right in this spot next to the silk. We could settle on the silk and that would help. But I feel like that's just a little bit too exposed to Thebes. If we go just one tile in, we get access to all of the good tiles. In fact, yeah, we get all access to all of the good tiles around this city while being a ton more defensible to Thebes. If we go one tile along, even better. But that's starting to conflict just a little bit too much more with Takao. In fact... We should go one tile along because we still get all of the best tiles here. Um, but we're all the way down this little sort of ocean coast thing here. If we go right here and um, we get this extra horses and this cattle. So we get some good stuff within our lands here that we wouldn't have done otherwise. And now we're practically defended against a boat attack from Egypt, which is really important. 
And if it's a land attack, well, all their units have to cross this river here. And the moment they cross this river, they will lose all their movement points and we'll get free shots on them with our capital and any range units that we've got nearby. So absolutely perfect. That is what we want to be doing. We really need... Hello, Gandhi. Welcome. We really need to get Mount Kailash into our territory quickly. Now, in fairness, I do like to, with something like Mount Kailash, you could do this with Mount Kailash. There's the other one. Mount Sinai has got no food on it. Basically, any natural wonder that you want to work that doesn't have two food on it. I like to grow to pop three first in the cities and then work it. In our case, we can't even work it anyway because we can't afford to buy the tile. But if we were to have the tile in our in our lands anyway, we'd be we'd like to wait until pop three before working it. Just because those first two population points are really important in just getting your city going. And so if you get up to three, now you've got two population points that have already got your city going first. If we'd worked this from day one, Tikal would be absolutely poo. And we don't want that, so we grow it to pop three before working that tile. We're ready to settle this city here. We're going to go unhappy for a bit, but... In fact, we can afford to wait one more turn just so that our city stay happy and grow. Because we're going to settle the city and we're not going to be able to do anything useful with it anyway for that one turn. Because we can't grow. So let's just wait one more turn before settling the city. And then we'll stay happy when we do it. Because we'll be improving this salt here. And it's one of our unique luxuries. So there we go. Salt was improved. And now we can settle the city and not go unhappy. There we go. Production focus and order of priority. Three food tile. So let's immediately work this bison and... Granary Library. That's the build order that we want to go for here. Now that the scout doesn't have anything else to do, let's move out. And we need to, once we get optics, we can start sending these scouts across the water to go and search out for other lands. In fact, we need to make sure that we get the city up here settled. So let's do that too. Okay. Our capital would now be starving because our settlers are done being built, but that's okay. And because our settlers done built, we can redistribute our citizens here to work in our priority order. Any tile with two or more food on them, prioritizing tiles with three or more food. One bison, two wheat. Perfect. And we're going to immediately go for the granary here because that's part of our build order. We want to go scout, scout, worker, granary. We had to take a little bit of a detail because we needed to get that shrine because we're the Maya or the pyramid rather. But now we want to go straight back onto our granary. We kind of actually, now I think about it, we kind of actually also desperately need a worker. So we're actually going to break this a little bit and get one more worker before we go onto the granary. Just because without these workers, we won't be able to get our luxuries online. And if we don't have our luxuries online, we can't grow. Any barbarians up here? So there's something here that the game doesn't like. So we are just going to wait for a bit here with our settler. This scout can wait into Cal. We need to improve this silk basically with height urgency so that we can keep settling and stay happy. So we're going to move this worker down to improve the silt next. Prioritize improving luxuries first with your workers. You can also now afford to buy Mount Kailash. So let's do that. And in two turns, when this city grows, we'll put it on faith focus. So that citizen goes and gets us the faith. Keep moving over here. It can't hurt to improve just this cattle while on the way with a pasture. Because we are about to finish this mine. And that means we'll have five happiness left over after we found this city. So we do just about have the time to stop before we carry on. Legalism. Free culture building on our first four cities. Now we have monument, monument, monument. And we will get a monument for free with this new city when we settle it. Perfect. We'll get this scout up here so we can keep watch to see if Egypt is sending us any military units. This scout is waiting for optics to finish before it can explore the seas. And this... Settler is waiting for his escort. Now we do need to get more cocoa online because we already have a trade deal going for our cocoa, which means that if we get duplicate cocoa, we get extra happiness. So we should probably use our worker to try and improve us some cocoa. We should also just quickly try and improve and get ourselves another two plus food tile for our capital. In this case, what I'm going to do with this worker is improve the wheat and then move on to the cocoa. That feels good. And this settler can continue moving north. And then this worker will go north to go help out this city when it goes up there. Here in our capital, we're now done with the granary. Or not capital, Tikal. We're now done with the granary. We actually don't have libraries available to build yet. So we're going to take just a moment and build ourselves a worker. We need to get up to probably 1.5 workers per city. 
That means six workers in our empire, and we want to get there as soon as possible. And that means essentially just straight away building all workers until six. They're the most valuable thing you can build in the early game until you've got your six of them. So we're going to go for that straight away. Then we just need to probably just get trapping so that we can build a circus and a camp on anything that needs it. And then we'll get writing so that we can actually build libraries in our expansion cities after their granaries. This scout is now just going to sit here for mostly the rest of the game to check that we're safe against Egypt. And this scout, now that we got optics, is going to go and attempt to explore the world a little bit. Stonehenge has been built. That's quite late. We're going to move up here. I'm not sure where to settle this city. I was kind of hoping that the city might go up here on the snow. Because it's a snow hill, the city might have some okay production. But there's a barb camp on it. Which means that we're going right here. <laughs> we're still going to get this fish, so this city's going to be okay. And we're still going to get this deer. And we're going to get access to a couple of civil service, like a civil service farm here. So it's not the end of the world. But it's really not ideal. This city, two food, zero production tile. It's the best we've got that fits the rules. And in tick out, we can now work Mount Kailash. Basically until we get a religion. It's kind of what we're forced into doing with something like Mount Kailash. Which is not ideal, but it has to be done. Next turn. Okay, so here we go. Keep moving here. We're not seeing anything useful yet across the world. We've got trapping done now. Let's keep moving. Ideally, this is done with a trireme, but we just don't have the build time in Palenque yet to build a trireme. Settle the city. Yes, please. There we go. And unfortunately, our best tile here is fit, that fits the rules is this fish. It's unfortunate, but that's what we are going to have to do. So we'll work the fish and maybe in time we'll find ourselves a better tile. But Palenque's also not using the sheep right now. So we could use that tile too with our City of Books now. And we're going to go for our classic Granary Library here. Egypt's built the Oracle. Okay. Let's go and improve the silk now. And we've expanded to a three food tile there. So we absolutely want to work that. Takal has grown to this iron tile here. That's where our next citizen is going to be going. Another tile improvement here in our cap. So it's got another three food tile. Borders of Chichen Itza. Yeah, we already looked at that. Barbarian dealt with. Okay, nice. Milk Smile does have at least production in it because it's founded on a hill. And there's a new land... Oh, not a new landmass. This is the same landmass, but we found Korea. We found Jeonju. Our cap has grown. We want to be working tiles in our priority order. That does mean we probably need to take this cocoa back now or buy this new cocoa. We're going to buy the new cocoa so that we can keep working this cocoa tile into cow. Because we know that this next population point wants to go on this iron. We'll then go and improve the cocoa so that we can get our duplicate lux trade from it that we've already secured. And we've got this new settler which needs to go and help Uxmal. The question is, how can it help Uxmal? It's going to help Uxmal by improving the sheep so that Uxmal gets more two food tiles to work. So that's how we're going to help it. And then when Uxmal gets a stable, it will be even better. But let's improve our sheep here. Chichen Itza grew. Again, no better tiles to work than a simple flat two food tile. It's unfortunate. Let's keep moving here with our scout past John Ju. And now that we've done with writing, we want to just fill in the rest of this ancient era section before probably heading on to philosophy for the National College. Let's immediately just work all the way for Coco there and heal with our spearmen. Egypt wants friendship. Why not? Like, I don't like taking friendships in the early game with AIs just because it tends to annoy some other AIs. But Egypt's not going to be at war with too many people. And because they're our neighbor, they're the one person we don't want to go to war with us. So this friendship makes sense. If we annoy all the rest of the other AIs in the game, doesn't matter because Egypt is the only one that can kill us. Takao grew immediately on to working this iron next. And we've got another social policy. Now, our happiness is actually quite dicey. We are not close to getting our happiness up from zero here. And we're going to grow in one turn in Uxmal, which is going to make us unhappy. So the question is, are we actually going to benefit from taking landed elite in our capital yet? Probably not, because otherwise we're going to go unhappy for four turns for it. 
which is a bit of a steep price to pay, it has to be said. So I wonder if we take landed elite here and then with our next social policy, we well, we'll take monarchy and then with our next social policy in 12 turns, we'll take landed elite when we're actually ready to make use of the growth. We'll get the water, the wheel for a water mill. And then let's keep moving around here. There's Gandhi down here. Lots of wonders going. Our worker is finally done into Cal. Because it's going to take us two movement points to get to this iron, which is what we want to improve. We can actually be slightly cheeky. We can take one movement and use our second movement point to build one turn into a farm here. Then stop our worker from doing this, this work. And next turn we can use one movement point to work, walk onto the iron and then build a mine on it. Just a tiny optimization that we can do that helps there. We're going to get border growth in one turn to this silk. So we'll wait and we'll do the same cheeky little optimization. Put one turn into a farm here because we know we want to turn that into a farm regardless. And Uxmal has grown. We actually don't have any other two food tiles to work here. So we're going to go grab this sheep that we're improving next to Palenque. We now have ourselves four workers. So that means we still need two more. So let's grab ourselves one more worker. And we'll grab one more, probably one more worker here in Tikal as well. And then we should be good to start building cargo ships for growth. Now, I love internal food trade routes. They are basically the next most important thing to get after your workers. Problem is, we don't have the happiness to support the growth right now. So it's okay for us to not be going mad on growth at this point in time because we don't have the happiness to support it yet. Around about turn 60 to 270 is where you start having the happiness and frankly the food to support that kind of insane growth. That's why turn 60 to turn 120 on deity difficulty on quick speed is what I usually call the growth window. It's the period in time where you want your empire to be growing like mad. And essentially you don't have to worry about getting too much growth outside of it. Just get the best growth you can. The majority of your growing is going to be getting done in that window. So that's what you need to worry about. If you're not growing outside of that window, it's not too much of a catastrophe, provided you grow during it. So that's what we're doing here. It's just kind of making sure that we get our happiness ready so that we can support growth during the growth window. And we're going to do that by getting all of our luxuries online and having Mount Kailash within our borders. Hopefully we'll get a religion soon. It's showing that we can get a profit anytime from now. Sadly, profits are a little bit... There's a random number generator that determines whether or not you get a profit once you're over the profit limit. We're over the profit limit, so we do just kind of need to wait for this RNG to go in our favor now. But that's fine. It's not too much of an issue for it to not be fully in your favor. We can wait a couple of turns, no problem. Yeah, no good tiles really around Uxmal. Our borders of Palenque have grown to the other gold as well, so that's perfect. We'll improve that so that we can get another luxury trade later. And we'll notice that Uxmal is now working two food tiles quite happily, so that's perfect. Here in Palenque, we've grown here. We don't want to be working this three production tile because it's not got two food or more on it. So we need to look for a tile that does that. Sadly, we actually don't have one because we're sharing tiles around a little bit. So we will go on this horse right now. And then we'll sort out some more tiles for Tikal. And then that will allow us to work some different, like this cocoa again here in Palenque. Perfect. We now got a luxury and we are back to having four happiness as a buffer. Chichen Itza has grown once more. We're looking for our two food or more tiles. This silk is a perfect option. We should try and get Chichen Itza this cattle and this horses. That's because they're going to provide us tiles with two food on them that also have production. And those are really important to have in the early game. So we're going to buy this tile and then try and grab this horse tile afterwards. We can also get that from this, bice, this cattle tile because we can put a pasture on the cattle tile like we did for this one here. Okay, and we're going to start doing the same in Palenque, ideally. Now, we do need to make sure we're getting tiles with two food on them to work in Palenque. So we're actually going to go ahead and improve the sheep tile there first. And actually, we need to do the same in Uxmal. Now, we do need to... We are actually going to be able to get ourselves a trade with Korea if we improve this gold. Because that will be a duplicate, which we can trade away for their duplicate dyes. So here we are, gold for dyes. Perfect. And now we've got all of our deals solidified. Keep bombing that barbarian camp. Very nice. Our gold per turn is pretty wicked because we've actually got luxuries that have two food or more on them that we can actually work. And whenever you have that case, you're actually always going to have great gold in your empire. And because we've got calendar luxuries on grassland and because we've got salt 
we actually have tiles that we can work that have two food on them and some gold. That's really cool. Not something you get every day. And that is going to help make sure our empire's got good gold. Our prophet is finally born. Say hello to our Mayan great prophet. We'll immediately found a religion with it. And we'll just take... We'll take... We'll take Tengrism because we like the look of this bird thing. And our, our standard religion. If I love Civ 5. We get a founder belief. Essentially, whenever it's available, Tithe is always the one you want to pick. If Tithe isn't there, Initiation Rites is the one you want to pick. Initiation Rites is actually gone, but Tithe is still here. Plus one gold for every four followers of this religion. It's slam dunk the number one pick. And then next, we essentially want to sit down and think about what do we actually need? Are we desperate for happiness or are we desperate for production? If you're desperate for happiness, you want to find the best religious building that you can buy with faith that has happiness on it. That's what you want to pick here with your first follower belief. We are kind of desperate for happiness. Problem is, is that there are no religious buildings left with happiness on them at all. Which means that while we were coin flipping between production and happiness, well, actually, there's no religious building we can take to provide us some happiness. So we'll just take the production. Religious community is a ridiculously good faith belief. It is your absolute top choice for your second follower belief It's still there, if it's still there. And if you don't need a faith building that also gives you happiness, well, religious community is the top choice for your follower belief. So we'll take that. Some stuff being demanded here. We've grown to some more some more fish. We might think about getting a lighthouse here before the library in Uxmal because we're going to have three fish in Uxmal that we can take advantage of with the lighthouse. And that means that we're going to immediately, instead of just having three tiles with two food on them, we'll get three tiles with four food, one production on them. That's going to make Uxmal absolutely ridiculous. So we want that. We're going to build a pasture here. And you know what we're going to do with this, this worker? We're just going to step down here and build a farm because that's a two food, one production tile. We like that. Now that our workers are all done, we would normally go for all libraries, but we're not going to get our libraries complete. We essentially want to build our capitals libraries in time for our last expansion cities library to also finish. Now, we've got 25 turns to wait here. Uxmal is going to do who knows what before it builds its library, which means Palenque does not need its library yet. We have eight happiness now, so... The next most priority thing after workers, now that we have six of them, is absolutely our cargo ships. So we're going to be building cargo ships now. We have two that we can build. We're going to get ourselves our third one here at construction, which we'll go for straight after philosophy. That'll be three that we can... Is it construction? No, it's the third one's engineering, so I lie. But we want to go for that third one engineering as soon as we can as well. So we're going to immediately build our two cargo ships from our capital now that we can. And essentially, with our first two cargo ships, we want to be sending one to our capital... We want to be sending one to whichever expansion we want to grow the most. Essentially, send it to your best expansion. Whichever one looks like it's going to be becoming the best city, that's what you want to send your food trade route to. And then with our third one, that needs to be more food back to Palenque because you need to send a minimum of two to your capital. Wow, Chichen Itza is going to be good. We'll build the library here. We can buy this horse's tile now. And that now supersedes this tile in our priority order. So we'll move it over. This iron is now done. We have iron online. Let's go and improve this tile. So it's a three food tile for Takao to work. And then we'll probably want to improve the sheep over there. We can cheese the deity AI for some iron sales. So we will absolutely be doing that. One iron for two gold per turn. Improves our GPT even more. Egypt wants one for two. We're, we're selling it one for one because that's all they had. But we'll do one for two now. And we'll bundle the embassies in there. Why not? We've met the Aztecs. Hello. Embassies, please. And there they are all the way down here. Egypt is absolutely spamming wonders. It is a crying shame that we don't really have the ability to capture or kill thieves right now. But honestly, if we did a chariot rush earlier on in the game, we might have had a chance. The problem is that Egypt has an early game unit unit, and that would have made that a little bit troublesome. That is finally gone. Let's improve these tiles. What else have we got here? This gold is nearly complete. Okay, and uh, we can't really do anything more here with this scout, so let's just head back. We A trireme doesn't look like it would be that beneficial to us either, actually. So I'm glad in a way that we haven't built one. Work is done here. Now, we're going to prioritize a pyramid because we're the Maya, and it's ridiculously good, and we're going for religion. Now, the question here of what to do after you get philosophy is usually a relatively straightforward one. You have two pathways you want to take. Do you want to go to civil service or do you want to go to engineering? Engineering, 
because you want to go for that initial food trade route, that third food trade route first, or civil service because you desperately, desperately, desperately want the food that comes from civil service farms. Now, our empire can definitely benefit from civil service farms, but I'm thinking that you're, we're essentially going to get like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There is like 10, 11 food available, 12, 13. Lo there's loads of food available from civil service farms, actually. But also, it's not too much of a detour to go to engineering, really, especially because we actually need coliseums in the early game. You do want to be taken to coliseums before civil service. Otherwise, you won't have the happiness from the Colosseums available to use the food from civil service. Because we're going to be at construction anyway before civil service. And because mathematics is required for civil service, we're going to go engineering first because it's only one extra tech and then tech to civil service after that. This work is finally done. You can go and improve that sheep up there. And there's another great tile to be working here now. That next citizen growth that we get here is going straight on this three food farm that we've made for ourselves. And then the next one from Chichen Itza, same. In fact, priority order, this one wins. So let's go do that. And now what's priority for Chichen Itza is actually getting ourselves some production. Chichen Itza is quite short on production because we don't have any production coming off tiles with two food or more on them. And we have to be working our two food or more tiles. So we're quite low on production. But if we go and cross the water here and improve our horses and this cattle, this is production that we can get off tiles with two food or more on them. So that's why we're going to go do that next. Here in our camp, we need another f tile with two food on it. Thankfully, we've just made one, which is this farm that we built right here. So we can immediately work it here. And this worker here can now go and improve this sheep up here to get us some food off the sheep tile. Sadly, there's no real better options for two food tiles here. We could work this. But actually, we've got quite a long build queue. And working this production gets us this lighthouse faster, which is important. So we're actually going to go take the sheep tile here and disobey our rules a little bit just because we know we're using our production to get more food. Let's get the scout back. This one, go get the sheep. This one here, probably building a road is going to get us some gold, and that's going to be useful quite early. So I'm just going to build a road here quickly because it's only four tiles to Palenk with this spare worker. While we improve food over here. And then we do need to improve another food tile to be worked into Cal. Again, this tile right here, perfect. And by the time that Takao grows again, this sheep will be ready. And then by the time Takao grows after that, either we'll get this fish improved with a lighthouse, or we'll improve this tile right here or this tile right here for more food. So let's build our road. Takao, that was the growth there. And we've expanded to this other wheat tile here in Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza is going to be nuts. So priority order, redo them like this. And then our worker, get it on dry land. And we'll actually buy this cattle tile here because we know we're going to want it. Can't believe Chichen Itza's growth. It is absolutely insane. Let's keep wandering around. Go and improve our sheep here. This barbarian, we're going to need to kill it because we actually do want to work this fish tile in Uxmal. At some point, we're going to need to get an archer so that we can kill that barbarian galley that is completely stuck over there. That barb camp's gone. That's good. Let's keep on moving. We want to improve this wheat and this cattle next. And this style is now better there. And in fact, we've got to follow the rules. There we go. Take that off the horses. And when Palenque grows again, it can work the horses again. Uxmal has a granary. So by far and away, the safest sea-based internal food trade route is Uxmal to Palenque. Because there is no chance of a barbarian spawning between Palenque and Uxmal. Barbarians can't cross this deep ocean right now. Because you need to have caravels to cross deep ocean. And there's simply nowhere that a barbarian camp could spawn to poo a barbarian ship into this space. So we're going to go and put this into Uxmal. And then we're going to build our next cargo ship. And probably actually send that to Uxmal from Palenque. Just because Uxmal is actually going to be really strong. Because... Let's go do this. Oxmal's actually going to be really strong because it's got some hills and it's got some production to work. Like, it's okay. And those fish that are going to be four food, one production, up to five food, one production with a work boat are actually going to make it really, really powerful. Them's the rules here. There we go. Open borders with Egypt? I don't think so. In fact, we should actually do that so that we can scout through Egypt's territory. So, you know what? I'm actually going to accept open borders with Egypt. 
so that we can go scouting through their lands like that. And I'll just put this scout on auto explore and it can just run. Some deals ran out. We can now take landed elite now that we actually have some happiness to help with our growth. And we need to redo our trade deal for the ivory. In fact, we can't redo that anymore. Is that because he's already getting something that we were doing a deal for earlier? I guess so. That's unfortunate. Guess Korea's got some, yeah, Korea's got some Coco in Jeonju. So we actually can't redo that trade. We do, however, have some gold per turn and some horses. And we might be able to leverage the gold per turn. We've only got five. If we sell our horses to Egypt like this, um, we can now leverage the gold per turn to buy Korea's ivory. We have to do this, sadly. We've got no other choice. We need to keep getting those luxury trades with AI. And if we can't do duplicate for duplicate, we sadly have to do gold for it. Keep building our road. We could sell our cocoa, but we want to hold on to that cocoa for... There are three more sieves that we haven't met yet for duplicate for duplicate luxury trades with them. Palenque, food, yes, please. Yeah, see, Egypt wants a load of stuff, but we have to hold on to this cocoa so that we can secure ourselves a duplicate for duplicate luxury trade back. You never know. If we were to sell this luxury for gold per turn, you never know when you're going to go negative gold per turn and now, and now not have the gold to buy that luxury back in response. So we keep hold of our luxury in defense for in case our gold goes negative. Blank is just going to grow and keep growing. This tile is probably the best in our priority order of what's left now. And this tile here. And keep scouting. There's nothing here. <laughs> Should you make an offering to Egypt, land of the gods, I'm confident that you'll have bountiful harvest for many generations. You get a massive, a massive boost in diplomatic relations with AI when you accept this. And technically, I think we can afford it. So let's just accept it. Like we were holding on to it for Lux for Lux trades, and that is 100% true, but this massive diplomatic bonus is going to be huge. So let's just take it. And you'll see here, they asked for your help and you provided it. That is a massive bright green modifier, which means it, it, it's big. It means that basically Egypt's not going to declare war on us now. And that's the one thing we're afraid of. Now granted, Egypt is pretty pants as civilizations go. They've only got two cities, and that's pretty shocking. But, hey-ho, this is a slightly better title to be working now. So maybe we'll kill them later, but for now, especially because they've got so many wonders that they've... Well, they've only actually built two. I thought they'd built more than that. It's just I happen to be concentrating on the ones they did build. But they do have two wonders. And we might take those wonders later. You never know. Okay, let's keep moving about. But I think that scout is done finding things. And then we can come back towards Takao here. Keep building this road. That's going to provide us positive gold per turn. And then let's ignite Uxmal with a little bit of growth. Or do we ignite Takao? Let's ignite Uxmal. And then the next can go to Takao. Very nice. Oh, look at this. That is absolutely insane. We actually desperately need an archer so that we can <laughs> so we can kill this barbarian galley. Dear. Let's do that. Civil service farms. Let's get ready for them. Our cargo ship is done. We can't use a lighthouse in our capital. And we actually have no more decent tiles to work here. Apart from this one. So why don't we go for that? And then come here and do this. Come here and build the road. Palenk. We need to get ourselves our happiness buildings up. They're most important. Libraries are coming, slowly but surely, but we can maybe wait one more building for that. So let's go get ourselves the circus because it builds faster. And then we actually need to get ourselves a missionary now that one's available so that we can spread our religion back to Takao and probably then to Chichen Itza. This scout can go and auto explore and see what it finds. That's done. That's production to Chichen Itza. This is perfect. That's what Chichen Itza was missing. And then priority order onto the silk. This worker probably wants to just improve this iron. So we've got another decent tile here. And then farms. This can come down here. Road is done. 
spread our religion to Takao so that we can keep our natural wonder faith, and then to Chichen Itza so we can fight off the growth of Egypt's religion over there. The holy city for Egyptian Judaism. Probably next best tile we've got is this iron one here. Especially because we're going to get some extra production on it soon. Technically, we should be working this flat, this flat, like two food zero coast tile here. But we're getting a food trade route in next man now, so it's not quite so important. And now library into cow followed by a Colosseum for sure. We have this tile ready, so that's where our next citizen is going to drop onto. In fact, technically, it's better to do this. And this person's now done. We'll go and spread our religion here in Takao. There we go. And then we can come over here and build another farm. And then maybe we need to think about... We'll put one turn into a library in our capital now. Because the thing we want to build is this next trade route. But it's one turn away. So we might as well go for the library while it's here. These tiles are going to be ready for us soon. So let's... Now, we could wait for the optimal time to work these tiles, but you know what? Like, this one's actually ready, so we'll go do it. And Takao grows. Priority order. These tiles are ready now, too. That's pretty good. And then this missionary comes over to Chichen Itza to convert that to our religion next turn. And now we're going to be getting great gold per turn from Tithe. We're getting four from our religion of Tithe already. That's our positive gold. Korea has some spices available. We can't afford to buy that. If we had the money, we'd do it, because that's what you have to do. But we can't afford it right now. We'll actually build a pyramid here, because we don't have one yet. <laughs> and that's our Mayan special building. Chichen Itza loves Civ 5 too. That's perfect. Now, what do we do? We probably need to start building the road to Chichen Itza. So let's do that. And then after we build the road here, we'll get ourselves a little free food tile with a farm. This is going swimmingly. This tile is now done. We'll lock this in just because it's a bit closer. That leaves this tile open for Uxmal to use, which actually we want to. And then we should probably build the road to Uxmal now too. So let's go and prioritize doing that. This is going well so far. And now we're at turn 60. So this is where the growth window is ideally supposed to start. And you'll notice how prepared we are for the growth window now. Because we have two of our food cargo ships already. We have happiness of three. And now we can get started on building things like Colosseums. Essentially, now we want to be churning out as much growth as we can from now until turn 120. Now, it's okay if our growth doesn't start going ballistic until turn 70. And that's usual because tradition growth goes ballistic with aqueducts. And we'll get our aqueducts in 10 turns. So that's what we're waiting for now. And that's when our tradition growth is going to be going absolutely ballistic. We've got 10 turns to wait, and then we can do it. Let's go get our trades quickly. So what we'll do is we'll probably just play the rest of this out until we get to our ballistic growth stage when our aqueducts are up. So let's just trade away the rest of our gear for some extra cheesy gold per turn. Aztecs doesn't like us, apparently. Egypt likes us. In fact, we'll trade two iron for 74 gold here. Just to try and squeeze a little bit more actual flat gold out, which we can use for tile buying. Because we can actually buy some tiles to try and get better tiles for our cities to work here. For example, we could buy this hill. That would be good. We could buy any of these two hills. Those would be good. Because with civil service, those hills by the river have two food on them. We also need to buy out this cattle into Cal here. We'll probably wait... After the nine turns that Takao uses to grow to this hill, it will get the cattle after that. So we probably don't need to buy the cattle. Which means that we probably want to use this gold to grab the two civil service farm hill tiles in Palenque. Okay. And that is our library done in Palenque. Back to our priority of the cargo ship. So there we go. Chichen Itza has grown again. Now, what are we going to do in Chichen Itza? Like, Chichen Itza is ridiculously good. We need to get our circus and our coliseum built here. And we're going to do that right after the pyramid. Now, we could follow priority order and maybe drop this on a two food tile here. But Chichen Itza is kind of growing six turns per growth already. And it doesn't have an aqueduct yet. So I'm inclined to actually leave this here for a minute and just use this production to try and get through the rest of Chichen Itza's production queue. Here we're done with the library. We need to build ourselves a pyramid and a coliseum. In fact... We'll go Colosseum first here, just because we're not 
getting a Colosseum soon anywhere else. And we do need to watch this to happiness slightly. Let's go over to here and we'll come here and build a road. Chop this down. And essentially now we have the time to start building Colosseums to try and keep up with our happiness. Palenka's grown, very nice. What have we got here that we could be working? They're actually, uh, this is a decent choice right there. So that's our pre-planning that's allowed us to do that. And then the next growth for Takao is probably going to work the one next door. Build our roads here. This is our city connection done here. Let's go and get this tile here with this worker. And with this worker, not a lot to be done in Uxmal at all. In fact, let's buy that. And then we probably just want to improve a, a hill probably here. And then here we want to go improve this tile right there. No other luxuries we can really improve right now. We could try and buy Egypt's whales. And that we can do. Keep a watch out for it. Buy them as soon as we can. You never know when you're going to need it. And trust me, you always need it. Go and get our farms here. And Uxmal has grown too. Uxmal just needs good tiles to be working. It's got nothing else it can really work with food here. Because it's already got plus 12. I'm going to grab this gold right now. Because it's got plus 12. You want anything more than at least like plus 10 slash plus 12 food. Is what you want to be going in in all of your cities. To be really properly growing them. Because we are actually at plus 12. Because we got these two fish. We can afford to work this production tile just for a minute. And that'll actually help us get through this Colosseum faster. Then this pyramid. And actually then two workboats to improve our fish. So that's actually why we're going to do the production there. Pretty valuable. And then keep putting farms down. Because when these become civil service farms. They are tiles with two food on them that Palenque can work. We've chopped this down now. Let's come back to Chichen Itza. Road done. And then put another road here. We're going to put the road here on the cattle as opposed to the road here. Just because this road might be slightly more useful. If Egypt ever goes to war with us. Montezuma is at war with Sejong. Okay. And that is this road complete. And we can now improve these wheat tiles. This is ridiculous. And since we're working this tile, why not put a hill on it? Let's go. Cargo ship done in the capital. We want to be improving our happiness next. So let's get the Colosseum. And this cargo ship, you always want to be sending of your first three internal food trade routes, two to your capital, one to your favorite expansion city. So we're going to rebase this to Takao so that we can send it from Takao to Palenque. So that our capital is getting two. We should probably negotiate open boards with open borders with maybe Gandhi. So that our, our scouts actually have somewhere to go. Apparently we're going to have to pay him slightly for it. That's fine. So Cal has grown. Very nice. That's, that's this tile that we're ready for. And now that this is done, we're going to keep improving these farms around here. Get this done. We're going to come back here and try and have some more foresight and improve some more three food tiles for Takao to use. We can also purchase with faith. We could use that to just get our cities following our religion. And we can actually, if we get a missionary, we can get Oxmouth following our religion and probably actually convince Memphis to follow our religion as well. That's quite funny. So let's do that. And then this trade route from Takao. Link. Now we've got two food trade routes going to our capital. And now our cities are going to be growing. Palenque has plus 26.4 food. In your capital city with the two food trade routes, you want to be aiming for really more than plus 25 food here. So plus 26.4. Perfect. Here plus six. This city needs more growth. It's doing okay. It's working good tiles. The problem is working this. If we weren't working this, we'd have plus eight. So that's unfortunate here with Tikal. It is what it is. We will build a workboat next because we are working this fish. Plus nine here. We have made a bit of a trade off here, but we're not yet quite in the growth window. This is maybe okay. But again, if we were to do this, now we have plus 11. And you know what? We're going to do that because that seems to make sense to us. This isn't going to be improved anyway for a couple of turns. So I think we're good to go. We could buy the spices off Korea and again, following our rules, whenever a duplicate luxury is available to be bought, we buy it. We're spending a lot of gold on this right now, but that's why we were doing cheese deals to go and sell our horses and our iron for one for two with AIs earlier. Our first spy, you know what we do with that. It goes straight into the city state of Kuala Lumpur. Because it's cultural, because it's friendly, 
because we've done this, Kuala Lumpur will be our ally. It, it might take a bit longer if we complete this quest, actually, for the trade route. It's going to be quite a lot quicker. Kuala Lumpur will be our ally, and it's got its cultural, and it's got a unique luxury resource that we don't have. Perfect. That's why we're doing it. City's grown here. The best tile to go on is going to be one of these two hills. So let's put it on this one here. And then this missionary. We're going to convert Uxmal first, because this missionary might start losing some influence while it's in Egyptian lands. So essentially, we want to use all of its 1,000 influence to convert Uxmal, just in case it goes down to 750 influence because it's been in Egyptian territory. That barb still needs to die. We need to build an archer for that at some point. And then we will move over here. Continue to get ourselves our three food tiles where possible. And this is going to become a civil service farm, so we want to improve that. Chichen Itza grew, Uxmal grew. Uxmal is unfortunate. Like... At this point, looks the mouse got plus 10. We kind of need to start working that tile now. Is what it is. Palenque has finished its Colosseum. We are still holding off because we are going to get our free aqueducts in just three more turns. And that means here, we do need a stable. A stable is going to be really good here because it's going to improve this cattle, this horse, this sheep, and eventually this sheep. Stable will be really good. We want to queue that. But National College is available, so let's build that. <laughs> Very nice in Chichen Itza. This is the tile we want to be working here. And once our National College is done, we should be in perfect time to then build our Circus Maximus to keep our happiness up even higher. Into Civil Service we go, and now the growth window starts. We've got our Civil Service farms. We've got all of our lighthouses up. We've got all of our trade routes up. And now let's review the food in each of our cities. Plus 13 in Uxmal. 31.9 in Palenque. Plus 6 here in Tikal. But you know what? I reckon we can do better than that. Let's do this. Because then Tikal can take this here. So now we're up to plus 7. Unfortunately, we are just kind of being stung by having to work this, this tile here. The Mount Kailash. But... Takao will keep improving. Plus 7 here. It's unfortunate. Plus 11 here. That's perfect. And these tiles are now up to plus 6. So we are about the plus numbers that we want. In fact, there's another food tile here. We need... Uh, our next food trade route should certainly be going to Takao. It's what's going to be needed. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's tough to give up something like the sheep. But for the one extra food, we might have to do that. Because we're not really behind on our production queue here, I think that's the best course of action. And then as we grow, we can work these tiles because we're up to plus eight now, so that's fine. Civil service farm, regular farm. And then we're going to go hang out just outside Memphis, but not go in yet. So the next turn, we can run in and convert Memphis over to our religion. Civil service is done now. Your next choice is to either go metal casting or education. I like to prioritize workshops over universities. Just because if you get your workshops built, that makes your cities infinitely better. Whereas the university doesn't improve your city. It improves your ability to tech. Um, I just like workshops first because it makes cities better. So we'll do that. And then we'll construct a mine. And then we will next turn. We're on turn 69. Nice. Let's get to turn 70. And that is where we're going to be able to call this walkthrough. Here we go. Machu Picchu has been built. Palenque has grown again. Absolutely perfect. What have we got here? We'll just keep working this. We'll work this because we're going to get that done. Like that. Here we need more three food tiles now. So let's go and do this. More three food tiles required. So let's do this. We, can, we actually can't get through to Memphis here. So we're just going to have to wait one more turn. So uh, that brings us to the end of our early game walk walkthrough. Essentially... Hopefully you found something useful in this guide of how to take your empire basically up until the start of what I would call the growth window, where you want to be growing your cities as hard as you possibly can between turn 60 and turn 120 on deity difficulty on quick speed. And essentially, we've seen a few things. We talked about how to set your capital. Then we talked about your early capital build order of scout, scout, worker, and then granary. There are maybe some optimizations that you can do where you can change your granary out for something else. In our case, we built the Mayan special shrine, which is the pyramid. You might build a shrine if you're trying to get an actual religion. You might do some other things if you really feel like you need it, but that's the standard build order. 
Then after you've gone scout, scout, worker, then probably granary. Then you want to go and build all your settlers immediately after that. We needed three expansions. So we built three more settlers. We knew we wanted three expansions because our general rule is the number of cities you can have. It's the number of unique luxuries that you have in your lands, minus one. We had four unique luxuries in our lands, which told us minus one, three, so we could have three cities. We argued ourselves for a fourth city, just because Mount Kailash does provide us a cheeky extra two happiness. Now, we thought that maybe we could get something out of our religion. It's turned out that we didn't, but you never know. We might be able to squeeze out a couple of happiness from somewhere, but we're not too far off, so we just about argued that it was probably okay. Then we had a quick look at where we should be settling our expansion cities. We didn't really talk about it in too much detail, but we'll talk about it now. Where you should settle your expansion cities? Well, in general, you want to be founding your cities such that your cities have 10 to 12 tiles that have three or more of combined food and production on them. What does this mean? Tiles with three food on them. Tiles with two food, one production on them. Tiles with one food, two production on them. Tiles with three production on them. Those all count. Essentially, your cities actually aren't going to be working any more than 10 to 12 tiles with three or more combined of food and production on them. So that's all you need to argue to settle a city. And each one of our cities quite easily follows that rule. Even Uxmal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like you can argue that and maybe take some of your capital as well. 10 tiles with three plus food and production on them. Palenk, Palenk's pretty obvious. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Palenk's got far more than enough. Takao, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 maybe with one of these hills. 11, 12 if you start including some of these. Takao's got those tiles. Chichen Itza, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, you could you, 13, 14, 15, 16, you can argue for that for all of these cities. And that's why we've settled them there. And then we talked about expansion city build order that's almost exclusively granary so that we can send internal food trade routes to our capital, then library for national college. And then after that, you usually want to go for Colosseum so that you have enough happiness to support your growth window. In this game, we interspersed it a little bit with extra workers or lighthouses to take advantage of what we had going on here. And you'll usually need your expansion cities to contribute one or two workers when you've used your capital to get yourself three expansion cities. If you've got only two expansion cities, so three cities total, your capital can crunch out all of those workers pretty easily. Because we've got three, we kind of needed one of these expansion cities to help support us. So that's what we did. And that brought us to our expansion city build order. We talked a little bit about social policy trees and why tradition is the best for six cities or fewer and why liberty is the best for seven cities or more. And why honour and piety, essentially you spend all of your time taking your bonuses for honour and piety to make up for what you've lost from not taking traditional liberty. And therefore you don't actually get to use the rest of their bonuses, bonuses for something better. That is pretty much the end of our review for how you want to play the early game on Deity Difficulty on Civilization 5. I'm PCJ Law. Give this video a like if you found it helpful to you and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.